Everyone had a great day, yes? yes. Amazing. I'm so glad that you're here. Um, okay. You are at the help. How do I manage my project manager session? So I want to start by saying thank you to all the sponsors because truly without them, this amazing day wouldn't happen, right? So can we give them a round of applause, please? Thank you, thank you. Okay, so let's get started because everyone wants to go to the magic show, right? Because I do. Okay. Um, let me tell you a little bit about me. And because I'm a project manager by heart, let me tell you my story with a little... <laughs> yes, we've got a project manager in the room. The, the real project managers. Okay, right. So I started my career in the last century, as you can see. I'm not that old, right? Apart from the white hair, you'd think I'd be like 21, maybe. Um, so you can see from the orange bars that I've been in the consulting uh, side, so Microsoft Partners for quite a while with different small, medium, large partners. And then the purple bit is where I went over to the end user for a little while. After that, I came over to the Salesforce side, um, and it was much more fun. You guys are much more fun. We didn't have anything like this in the Microsoft space, so I'm very glad that I moved. Around 2020, I started my own business, which is Zen How, and that's training consultants how to be consultants, because that's one thing that I saw that was not, um, that was not easily available. So just very quickly, I'm just gonna, about 30 years of project delivery experience. The first part is in the technical and functional client-facing side. So I was a business analyst, I was a configurator, I was a systems engineer. I crawled under desks, putting networks together and configuring printers and servers, and I was a SQL DBA, all of that client-facing. The second part of my career, I was project manager because I thought I prefer telling people what to do. But it's a lot more fun. But also, I love getting the team together to achieve an objective. And a big core of my identity, and I talk about this a lot, is uh, for the last 14 years, I have been a Samaritans volunteer. And what that is, is Samaritans is a crisis phone line here for those who are going through emotional distress and turmoil and need to talk to somebody. And so I learn how to listen and from there, you can kind of draw a dotted line. Oh, it looks different. Um, when I started my volunteering was when my project started getting a lot easier. And the reason why they got easier was because I was listening better. My team was listening better because that's what I coach. They were listening to each other. They were listening to the client. They were listening to me better. And so in projects, we were doing we were solving interesting problems. There were no more people drama because we kind of worked through that. Oh, before I jump into it, um, I hope you get some questions towards the end because I will pick um, interesting question askers. Um, you could win this and you could also win this one. Salesforce end-to-end -end handbook. I have the author in the room, Christian. Um, He's going to, who can sign your name in. Uh, so yes, get ready with questions, okay? So you are here to learn about the different project manager personas. My team likes me because I'm just so awesome. But um, one of the things that they find is that when they go in, into a different team, and that happens in consulting businesses, um, they find all sorts of different kind of personas, and they say, well, how do I deal with that? And also, because I am post on LinkedIn a lot, I get a lot of questions as well. How do I deal with my project manager? And you will see that a lot of these people will resonate. The panicky one. The one who, when they get an email from the customer, oh my goodness, what, oh, how come like this? And what should we do? What, what did you do? No, what should we do? This sort of thing, right? Those sort of project managers, it's very difficult if you're in a team to manage them. You're thinking, you're supposed to be the calm one. 
And here you are flapping about. This is what I learned. This is a very British term. Somebody in America said, we don't do this flapping, but in England we do, right? You're flapping about like a headless chicken. So I know a few PMs like that as well because I mentor them. And what we need to understand is what's the behavior driven by, right? Usually it's by, oh my goodness, we're going to fail. This little thing is going to blow right up apart and I really don't want that to happen, but I don't know how to manage it, right? So that kind of behavior is driven by these two things. So what can you do about it when you're part of the team? Number one is to have empathy. Understand that this project manager, this panicky person has a need for stability. What do you do about it next? Is then you put a plan in place. Your strategy is to provide data, suggest small steps, and to have some contingency, helping them understand. So a lot of project managers, unless they've come down, so again, remember, almost everything I say will be through the lens of a consulting kind of project. Unless they've come from a small partner where they've had their hands in the delivery, in the gathering requirements, in the configuration, in the writing of the um, training manual, in the testing, and all of that, they're not, they may not necessarily know the details as much as you would as a value individual contributor. So you need to give them some assurance, give them data so that they know that this little thing that the customers explained about uh, sounds like they're complaining about isn't a complaint at all. The next one we will know is the micromanaging one. The one who wants to know how you're doing, why you're doing the, what you're doing, how fast are you going to do it, are you finished yet, how many of the user stories have you done? How many Jira tickets have you done? Why are they not done? What's the status? On and on and on. So we have a lot of those micromanaging ones. What's the behavior driven by? Again, it is fear of failure and lack of trust. If you tell me you're 50% done, I don't think I believe you. Let me look over your shoulder, right? So we have to empathize. A lot of micromanaging stems from anxiety. So a lot of people deal with anxiety in different ways. What can we do to help a project manager who has anxiety and it manifests itself in the way that they behave, which is micromanaging you? And that is you proactively share your updates. You, uh, I was in a Sylvia and Sophia's session earlier on, there's no such thing as over communication, really isn't, right? Just carry on telling them, I'm 20% done, I'm 21% done, I'm 23% done, and I am on track, I am not on track, I am two hours behind where I should be on track. These sort of things give them a lot more comfort level that they know where you are. So with a micromanaging project manager, you need to over-communicate to reduce their anxiety. And let me tell you, once you reduce their anxiety, they're more likely to leave you alone because you are giving them a lot of updates and they feel safe. Then we have the people-pleasing one. The ones who don't know how to say no, right? Um, we have all been, I have been in this place as well. Um, where they say yes, where they will add scope. They are actively involved in adding scope and you as an individual contributor in the team go like, why are you saying yes? Tell the customer no. The sprint backlog is locked. Um, so again, the behavior is being driven by desire to keep everyone happy and to avoid conflict and they can't set boundaries. That's a problem that they have. So what do we do? We, again, we empathize. They're a human being, right? And they, how many of us really love conflict? Hands up, right? So all of us have this, you know, conflict avoidant, people pleasing side of us as well. So understand everyone has that in various degrees. So how do we help our project manager? You help them set and communicate boundaries, right? You can't tell the customer we, 
we're going to do that because that's going to create technical debt and it's going to, you know, cause me lots of problems because that means I need to work at night and I don't want to do that. Help them prioritize, prioritize because you are likely to know more about the bill than they would. You are more connected to the details, so help them with that. Support them in saying no diplomatically and to negotiate the scope changes. In real life, though, I'm usually the one playing the bad guy in a scope question. So I tell my team to make me the bad guy. When a customer wants to add scope, you say, my project manager is unlikely to, you know, I want to help you, I really do, but my PM, she's a bit of a cow, like me, I'm a cow, right? Okay, so I'm just going to digress slightly. You might want to take a picture of this one because I did a little comic strip on the project manager who couldn't say no. And um, I will repost this at some point, but I did this some time ago and it got a lot of, uh, you know, it got a lot of reactions. So at some point, uh, have a look at that. Right. Um, next we have the, surely we can do more with less one. Slightly different from the uh, people pleasing one, but this is the one, the kind of project manager who, who drives more, who demands more. And that is usually stemmed by bigger ambition. I want to show that we have done so much with so little resources, and they also don't know how to set boundaries. So what do we do? We empathize, because all of us at some point have been this person also, to be able to show that we can do more, better, faster, quicker with less resources, right? So the strategy, right, is to help them set the scope. Again, you are going to be more connected to the details as a subject matter expert. Get them, help them with that, implement, you know, the, all of this, right, should be the project manager's job, right or not. But not all project managers have all the skills. A lot of PMs get into the role, not because they wanted to, but because somehow, you know, the path of life in their workplace have navigated them to that role and they don't may not have all the skills. So you as an individual contributor in the team for your life to be happier, you've got to kind of help them. So this is that help them set the scope to get sign off, um, help them implement formal change control, help them prioritize. I know we shouldn't be helping people do their jobs, but as I tell a lot of people, when you find yourself in a situation that you're not happy with, there's three things you can do. You can do nothing, you can try to change the situation, or you can leave the situation, right? If the only choice you have right now is to stay in the situation and try and change it, this is what you need to do. You need to help the project manager do what they're supposed to do. And this one is a kind of PM who tries to survive on the wing on a prayer, you know, those project managers who think it's going to be fine, don't worry, yes, I know Salesforce has just acquired this other ERP system, we are going to integrate them even though there's no connector and Millsoft doesn't know what the heck it is, I'm sure you'll be able to do it in two weeks, I have faith in you. Things like that, right? So you have PMs who just don't seem to understand risk registers. So there'll be those who are by nature, you know, if you ask them what they do on a weekend, they'll probably say bungee jumping off a you know, three-story floor, that sort of behavior. So what do you do? <laughs> You empathize, okay? So we all begin with empathy. Empathize with them. They have the courage or stupidity. One of either, right? <laughs> pick one. Pick the one that frames it better, right? And then what you do is you help them be less risky. And you do that by sharing in a tactful way some of the downsides of some of the steps that they're taking. Help them with risk assessment and planning contingencies and also, before they do this integration with this ERP thing that's, I'm not saying that they're buying it, but I'm just making it up. Uh, you know, like Salesforce is acquired this thing, let's do a proof of concept before we promise the customer we can do this, right? And then you just build trust. You just build trust there. I'm almost finished. So, 
the key here, you've seen a few personas, right? And you can see the formula is similar. So the key is empathy, is understanding why they're behaving that way, right? Why do people do what they do? And then when you get an inkling, so this is what I learned from listening to lots of people in my volunteering um, time, is that understanding and empathizing with someone else means that you get an idea of why they think the way they do that drives the behavior. And then you can put together a plan of action. So we've all been personas that you've seen there at some time, in some context, as a child, as a parent, as a partner, as a project manager, as a team player, as part of a leadership team, as part of volunteering, any all, all these things. We have been one of these things. So if I go back to the tied back to the topic title, if you want to manage your project manager, or if you want to manage your life, because if you think about it, it is with I'm talking about me when I'm talking about my project manager not being whatever, being micromanaging, being risky, being panicky. It's all me at some point in time, right? Is to understand the formula for successfully managing them. So I drew this some time ago and I feel that it's quite appropriate because when I don't, when I'm one of those characters, I am a bad project manager. And it's when what I'm doing is I'm reacting, right? So the PM is saying, oh, it's a bit chilly, but it's fine, right? And oh no, there's hail. And then when the hail comes down, you react. So you gotta go, oh, my son seemed to like the last photo, last picture for some reason. So what does a good project manager, what do they do? And what do we do if we want to project manager, project manage our lives properly? It's this, you anticipate, so hail is forecasted, you mitigate, you bring an umbrella when you go out, and you respond, which is when it actually does hail, you pull up the umbrella, right? So at our core, as a project manager, this is what we do. We identify risks, we mitigate them, and then we manage them. So when a project is sold properly, uh, from a consulting point of view, we have looked at it and we we can, you know, we've got the capacity, the competency to actually implement this. And I, as a project manager, handle it. It's my job to make sure it's successful. So if it fails, it is my fault for not anticipating, not mitigating, not responding appropriately. So when you're in the team, and you understand this is what the project manager's role is, you can kind of help them with that. So in a lot of scenarios, as you can see, it's the same formula. You empathize and understand why people do what they do. And then you anticipate it, you mitigate, and then you respond. So, you know, that formula can be applied everywhere. So um, with that, this is how you connect with me. I'm at the end of my slides now. Um, if you like my drawings, all of them are on Instagram. Uh, you can see how I evolve from a stick figure to a stick figure um, with more fabulous hair. Um, and yeah, with that, I am finished. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm open for questions or stories of your project manager and how you successfully handled the kind of project manager you've got. So, remember, I've got two books up here. And yes, sir. Right, so if you remember, there's one point I said, when you find yourself in a situation, you always have three options. 
do nothing, which is you just sit there and you just complain to everybody else, oh, my project manager doesn't say anything, do anything, whatever. You can try to change the situation, right? And by changing the situation, it could be one of many things. One is you could step in the role and say, actually, I think I can do this job better than this person, right? Do it and then acquire the skills and then step into that role and you know kick him out, right? And the third one is to leave the situation and find another team, another, you know what I mean? So it is evaluating. If you can, if you have the kind of good relationship with the PM, you can, you shouldn't, but you can coach them into their role. And again, it shouldn't be because a project manager by default is a leadership position. You don't expect a toddler to teach the parent how to parent, right? But we are human beings and we are all flawed and we find ourselves in situations sometimes where we're not suited to that role and we need to be coached into it. Um, but it's not nice being coached by your team members on how to be a PM. I hope I answer your question. Thank <laughs> you.